country or the busy avenue, Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. Be a missionary every day. Welcome to our missionary stories. I know you're loving this little story of Hyatt from Syria. And as we study these lessons, we want to learn what is being taught that is not according to God's word. And we are to give out the truth. In the last days, God's word said that we would be living in apostasy, turning from the truth. We must not compromise God's word. We must tell this to a lost and dying world. Christ has been back in heaven for 2,000 years, and now we have had all this time to get this truth out. And we are commanded to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Paul was in prison when he was writing the book of Philippians. And we can learn a lot from this because Listen what he says about these people as he's writing to them. He says I, in chapter 1, verse 3, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. And then verse 8, For God is my record how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in the knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve all things that are excellent that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Now, this is what Paul said, and this is what we are to all do. But I would that you should understand, brethren, this is verse 12, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. You see, Paul, when he was in Philippi, was beaten, him and Silas, and put in prison. And the prisons in those days were possibly caves, dark and dingy, beaten. And what were they doing? They were singing praises to God at midnight and God sent an earthquake. And the jailer saw that the doors were unlocked, and he fell down, and he said, What must I do to be saved? And he said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And you know, this is important for everybody that's listening, because if you are truly a child of God, you can claim this promise. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Now, that is the first step. Then, after you're saved, your whole household will come to know Christ as Savior if you believe and obey God's Word. Because God's Word says that whatsoever ye shall ask the Father, in my name. You have, to talk, you have to be a child of God to call him Father, and in his name means Jesus is your Savior. He will give it you, because we can pray in the name of Christ to our Heavenly Father in the power of the Holy Spirit, and whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name. So if you, as a child of God, have believed Receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. Believe that only the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse you from all sin. And believe that Christ died for you, that he rose again, that he lived a perfect life. 
He was perfect in his birth. He was perfect in his life. He was perfect in his death. And he was perfect in his resurrection that he never sinned. You can receive the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. Without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. You can do that today. And I pray for every person that's watching to believe. Let's pray. Our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we rejoice in Thee today for the power of the Word of God. We thank Thee and praise Thee for the Spirit of God that is our teacher. And we thank Thee for the blood that cleanses, the power that is in the blood to keep us from the evil one and in the Father's name. We thank Thee for divine protection that is ours and for our families as we believe and trust Thee to do what Thy Word says. All things whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. And we thank Thee for hearing and answering our prayers today. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. All right, as we come to this lesson, we have seen how little Hyatt received the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and how her brother once again was spying on her and that she knew that something would happen to her because she was afraid of what her father would do. So she didn't go back. This was the very first day that Aunt Mary was at Muna's house. She didn't go back all week because she was afraid of the beatings that her father would give to her and that Nader would see her. So when she met with Muna, Muna asked her why. She said, Muna, I know that I'm a child of God and that nothing can take Jesus Christ out of my heart. But I am afraid to tell my father that I have changed religions, that he may even kill me. She said, we will be praying for your protection. And we pray that God will give you the courage to live for him and to obey him by telling others about him. She said, oh, but Muna, I have read your booklet over and over and over that your father printed. And she said, I want to learn more. She said, I will get you a Bible. Oh, she said, I will guard it with my life. She got a Bible. She began to pray just like they had called to pray at least three times a day. She would pray like the Quran had taught her through a prayers that they had written. So she read where we're not to use vain repetitions. So she began to talk to God and claim his promises. And that she was to ask and she shall receive. She asked that he would forgive her for being unkind and talking back to the second wife. And she, that he would help her not to fight with her brother. Then she also read that she was supposed to ask the people that she hurt to forgive her, not only asking God, but to ask the people. So she went to the second wife. She prayed for God to help her to do this. She went to her and she told her she was sorry for talking back to her. And she said, now let this be a lesson to you that you will not do this again. And she said, I know that you are jealous of me because I am prettier than your mother are you. Oh, that was hard to take. That was really hard. She wanted to say something mean back to her and she knew she couldn't. And she said, I noticed that you have been different lately. She said, what are you doing? Trying to be good so that you can go to heaven? This was another opportunity for her to witness and to say, I know I'm going to heaven because I've received the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. But she was still afraid. So after she saw what this, and she knew that she was jealous. She knew she was telling the truth. She was jealous of her but she knew she had to do what God's word said and she had to obey God's word. 
Now this was difficult and when she saw her mother all the time and very, very tired. And also not only that, but she had to do all the work and her and Hyatt had to do everything. So this was hard for her. So she wanted to learn more and more about the Lord Jesus Christ. She knew that she had to go to church. And this one day when Hyatt was by herself, her father was at the coppersmith shop, and Nader was there with him. She went to church with Muna. When she went to church, it was different than anything she had ever, ha ever seen. They didn't wash their hands and their feet and pull off their shoes before they went in to worship and wash their face. And they sang praises to God and they read from God's word. And she felt like for the first time she was worshiping the true and living God. When she came out of church, who was watching? Nader saw her. And he says, where have you been? She wanted to tell a lie. You know, it's so easy to tell a lie. We obey Satan when we tell a lie. Oh, how it was just, re she was just ready. Because, you see, we tell the truth. This is the truth, God's Word. But Satan twists God's Word into a lie. So every time I tell a lie, I obey Satan, my enemy. So she knew she couldn't lie because God's Word said not to lie. So she said, I have been to church with Muna. And she was getting ready to say, I will give you candy if you won't tell father. But he was gone just like that to tell his father. <gasps> she knew she was in trouble now. She did not know what was going to happen to her at all. So she went home that evening. He invited all these special people in to the home. And of course, she's always asked to serve. You know how she always helps with the serving. And she heard the men, her father say to the men, what would you do if you caught your, child, your daughter coming out of the Christian church? And they said, you, your daughter, Nader's daughter would not dare to go to the Christian church. Did she go there for service? And he became so angry, he jumped up out of his chair and he said, why don't you ask her? And they asked her. And in her heart, she was saying, Lord, please help me to tell the truth. Please help me to tell the truth. She said, yes, I went to Muna's church because I have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. And I went there to worship him. He said, where is that infidel that forced you to change your religion? Talking about Muna's father. She said, Father, no one forced me. I know that God loves me and that God loves you because God's word says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. She said, and Father, God loves you. And she said, yes, I know that God loves you, Father, and he died for you. And he became so angry and she gave him this Bible verse and he said, are you willing to die for him? And she looked and she said, yes, because he died for me. He died for me. I'm willing to die for him. And he said, Nader, go and tell your uncle to heat 
the oven up. We have something to bake today besides bread. So Nader left, went to tell his uncle. He said, I know that the sheik will order you to be punished, and I am going to send for him, and we will meet him at my brother's bakery. He sent for the sheik. She was willing to die because she said to her father, Father, I'm willing to die for the Lord Jesus. Now, I don't think there's anyone that's listening today could say this like this little girl and truly mean it. She said, because I know that if I die, I will just be in his presence forever and ever. And he said, I will not have you an infidel. She said, Father, I'm not an infidel. I am a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, then you deserve to die. They were ready when the sheep came. All of them were here. She was praying in her heart that God would keep her just like he did the three Hebrew children. The three Hebrew children would not bow down to an idol. Nebuchadnezzar had every person in Babylon. They had to prepare to worship this idol that he set up. And every person that did not bow down to this idol would be cast into the lake of fire. Now you must understand that this is going, this is going to happen during the tribulation period. There's, you're going to have to worship the Antichrist or be martyred for your faith. So what happened with this? These Hebrew children said that, and you know, it is so wonderful to see, this is what we need today, young children that will stand true to the Word of God. Every person that is listening, in these last days, we need young men and women to stay faithful. Now, this is what happened in Daniel chapter 3. They had been taken from their homeland as Jews into the land of Babylon to be taught their, to worship their gods. Daniel would not. He purposed in his heart that he would not eat the meat that had been offered to idols or that he would not drink the king's wine. All of you that are listening, you're not to drink or put anything in this body that will destroy your brain cells or destroy your mind. This is what Daniel did. We need men like Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And remember, he was teaching them for three years about their gods. And remember, they had magicians, astrologers, sorcerers, and all of these, and people that dream dreams. These were visions and things that people believed in, and this is where they were. Therefore, they had to be trained for three years, but they did not lose their faith in God because they were obedient, God's word says in chapter 1 of Daniel, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and the astrologers and all of the wise men in the land of Babylon, because they were obedient. So they were not going to bow down to this idol, and what did they do? They said, We will not serve your God, nor bow down to him. And God will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. 
But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image. God is looking for people like this today. He's looking for young men and women to be faithful. And he, they were cast into the fire furnace, and it was heated so hot it even burned the people. And after they were in there, Nebuchadnezzar looked in, and he saw four instead of three. There was not even a hair singed, and they had been tied with ropes. And the only thing that was burned was the ropes where they were tied. And because these young men were faithful, listen what he said. He said to let them go, and he, those that have trusted in him, and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and made a dunghill, because there is no other god that can deliver after this sort, and then they were promoted. You children that are listening today, you'll be rewarded by God if you stay faithful and give out His Word. So he, she just wondered. She had just read this lesson, and she knew she was faithful to read her Bible. She loved it. And then when the time came, once again, he said, Are you going to serve Mohammed? Ali, are you going to serve Christ? She said, I am going to serve Christ. Just when they were ready to put her in the, front, in the oven, the sheik came in and he said, stop, let her go. He said, um, her father said, I knew you would want her punished, so we have the oven heated for her to be cast into. He said, you were wrong. There was silence. He said, Hyatt, have you received the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and you worship in Him? She stood up as straight as could be and said, yes. She was not even afraid to stand up to the sheep. He looked at her and he said, you know, let her worship the true and living God that she believes in. Because I learned that while I was there and these people were caring for me, that we would not have been so kind and good to their leaders if this had happened to them. I have learned that they love love us and will help us. They loved me and took care of me, and their God brought me back to good health. Now, Hyatt was overjoyed. Muna and her family were overjoyed. There were tears in everyone's eyes. Now she said in her heart, I can pray for my mother and for Nader, her brother, and even for the second wife and also for her dad, that through her obedience that they would come to know Christ as Savior. You see, there is a difference when you are a child of God, there is a difference because religion cannot save you. There is not another person on this earth that can save you. And we know that Mohammed was a person just like us. And we know that he is dead. We know that Christ is risen from the dead and he is in heaven today. We know that we have another little girl from Syria. This little girl was taken from her family. 
And she was in a land that worshipped many gods in Syria. She loved these people that had brought her there as a little maid. As she came to stay in this home, she loved the people that had brought her there from their, her homeland. She was in a beautiful palace. In this beautiful palace that you, you can't even imagine what this would be like for a little maid and to serve people like this. She wanted the true and living God to help her servant, Naaman. This is in 2 Kings 5, 1 through 17. And they had won a war. But the first thing I want you to mention, remember is that God gave the Syrian, Naaman, victory over Israel. Another thing I want you to understand, now God gave their enemy victory. Why? Because they were disobedient. When we are disobedient to God, that takes divine protection from us. It takes blessings from us. So this little Syrian girl came into this home and she loved working for this people. Now remember, she's a Jew and they are from Syria. And this is when she found out that Naaman had leprosy. She prayed to God that he would go to the prophet Elisha. So the king sent a letter to the king of Israel and he thought he was going wanting to pick a quarrel with him. And he rent his clothes. And when Elisha heard about it, he said, What has why has the king rent his clothes? And he told him that they even brought gifts. They brought gifts to him. And he told him to go and to wash in the Jordan River seven times. And he wouldn't even come out. He didn't want to go wash in the dirty Jordan River. But his servant talked him into it. And he washed in the Jordan River. He had leprosy. Seven times he had to go in to the water. Six times there was still leprosy. He had to obey and go seven times. Then he went to offer. He became, his skin became as flesh, as a, a child. He went to offer Elisha money. Elisha wouldn't take it because he said God healed him. I think that we can learn from these lessons what God wants us to do to love one another regardless of where they're from. Thank you.